everyone and thanks very much for coming back and joining me. So I have picked a great one as you can tell by the title tonight. I am going to be talking to you all about the movie Spawn from 1997 starring the lead role playing as Al Simmons aka Spawn Michael J. White. Massive fan of his by the way. So let's just get the intro rolling and let's get started. really quickly wanted to say guys if I look like I am absolutely exhausted or that I'm disinterested apologies not disinterested at all I am super happy to be coming on and talking about this but I did not really sleep at all last night um just was in a lot of pain nothing different than normal like so who really cares that's life not complaining just saying because sometimes in some of my videos people say that I look really exhausted and stuff like that Nothing I can do about that, sorry guys. But moving, rolling right on guys. <laughs> really happy to be here, seriously. So thank you so much for coming back. I get so much support on these Retro Fridays. So let's just jump straight on in. So of course this movie, Spawn, is based on the comic book character called Spawn, of course, from the comic books that were done by Todd McFarlane. And I think that Spawn is such a really cool, kick-ass and interesting uh, character. And I really had a lot of empathy for his character, for Al Simmons. And I just think that it's kind of like the crow for me. You know, you really do have so much uh, empathy for Al as you do with uh, Eric. And I will get into sort of in, in, in a few moments about why I really love the fact that this movie kind of reminds me in ways kind of ish of the movie The Crew. I have already done a Retro Fridays of The Crew. If you would like to check that out in my Retro Fridays playlist, you can uh, feel free to do so, guys. Um, what I really love is, of course, in this movie, you if you've seen the movie, you will obviously know this, there's a ton of bright, what I would call fluorescent green tones. Of course, you know, like as bullet winds and things like that and everything, you know, bright green. And of course we see a lot of that and we've seen a lot of that in if you have seen it, I don't know if you have seen it yet, but I actually did a reaction of it. It's basically the gameplay for the character spawn for Mortal Kombat 11 and I love Mortal Kombat, I've played all the games. So I was super happy with that uh, trailer of the gameplay for spawn because you've seen a ton of those uh, green fluorescent uh, tints in it and also in that trailer uh, Actually, how that gameplay actually started off was with Spawn, basically, which was cool. But it started off how the movie ends, you know, on top of the building with, like, his, like, red cape and everything. I'm not saying it was exactly like it, but it kind of made me feel like that was the end of the movie. If that makes sense, um, you can let me know. But another thing is, basically, Michael Jai White. Now, I am a huge fan of his. I actually am subscribed to him on YouTube. He actually has a YouTube channel. He is a martial artist and he is in so many amazing films. One that I would highly recommend, and I'll tell you why, would be Undisputed 2. Now, alongside that, along with him, is uh, Scott Adkins. Now, Scott Adkins, I actually reacted like a year ago to uh, a leaked audition of his that he done for Batman, to play as Batman, and it was amazing. And he didn't even care that it got leaked or whatever, but he was like, it's out there, it's out there. And I was like, whoa, he needs to be. I always thought that he should have been Batman. But uh, anyway, anyhow, he's a martial artist and stuntman as well. He's in a ton of amazing movies. He was also one of uh, the acolytes for Dormammu from Doctor Strange. So that was super cool. Uh, that's my all-time favorite Marvel movie, Doctor Strange. And my Scott Adkins is in it. But anyhow... Michael J. White and him is in it, so if you like fighting movies, you like martial arts, you like a good storyline, you like a kick-ass movie, you want to be a stop on what you're doing, leave my retro Friday, and no, I'm just kidding, wait till afterwards, and go and watch Undisputed 2. Now, this movie, I feel, is a very creative movie, uh, especially, like, they have to remember, this movie, guys, was made back in 1997. Now, if you think about it, I think super creative, I think super creative, uh, was a great action movie, packed with action it also well enough action for what it needed to be uh also 
very dark and gritty. I just think it had a really great tone to it. I really do. I think they've done a really great job on this. Hats up to, off to everybody who made this movie back in the late 90s. And the reason why it kind of reminds me of The Crow is just, you know, the whole sort of, you know, out in the streets, sort of outside darkness. It's that dark, gritty. And that's what I love. Movies like The Crow movie, like Todd Phillips' Joker, you know, very dark and gritty. And even things in the movie that reminded me of The Crow would be like the necklace, you know, when he went and, um, you know, he's seen his gravestone and he took out what was in from, from underneath the grave and his grave and he took out the necklace and he opened it up in the photo and everything was inside, like the little um, locket necklace. Now, I know it's not the exact same kind of or type of jewellery per se, but you know the way with the ring and everything from the crew so to me it does have little kind of small like elements that do definitely give me serious uh vibes of um the crew and also in this there was the sentence isn't it a bit early for halloween and you also like look back to the crew when he's like go send to eric halloween's not till manana you know i it's very um even sentences and things like that that were thrown in there like that sentence for example really reminded me of that do you know what i mean and something that I really love is that I had so much empathy for his character, very much I suppose in the same sort of a lines of like you felt sorry for him, you just felt for him, you really did, and you were really written for him, same as with Joker, you know, same with Joaquin Phoenix, you know, you felt a lot of, you know, yes, okay, you know, you see him as this awesome character, but at the same time, you're just like, oh, you feel really sorry for him, do you know? Like, as in this instance, you know, uh, Spawn is a comic book character, but at the same time, you are very emotionally sort of feeling for that character, like a lot of empathy. And I, I think that it's great when writers and actors and, you know, the whole, uh, everyone who's working on it can actually, you know, give you all those different kind of vibes and feels throughout this. I think it's actually, you know, hats off, you know, it's quite hard to actually incorporate that um, as an all over kind of did. Now, something that I really wanted to talk about was the uh, special effects uh, supervisor because he's called Steve Spaz Williams. And the dog in this movie is called Spaz, right? This dog. And I remember years and years ago, I was just sitting one night and I'm like, do you know what's so weird? Like, how random the dog is called Spaz. Like, there has to be some kind of something or some kind of reason. I remember looking it up on the computer and I was like, ah, that's why <laughs> the visual effects supervisor for this movie spawn. His middle name is Spaz and that's why the dog was called Spaz. Because you know how, like, it was kind of like I was talking last week about Indiana Jones. Um, and when he was talking at the start of the movie, you know, X marks the spot and he was talking about the professor and everything like that. That was named after his professor at school wherever right so it's kind of cool the way I like learning about stuff like that you know and looking wee things up about movies and looking up little easter eggs and stuff like that but I was just saying to myself there has to be some sort of reason because who on earth would call their dog spaz is that not kind of cruel like what <laughs> so yeah I just thought I would mention that but yeah I, I just absolutely love his character I love the cloak I love the classic cloak cloak that's why I loved seeing it in um the gameplay for Mortal Kombat 11 because the thing is is I remember that with uh, Soul Calibur 2 because that was like pretty much that, that was the last time we've seen him guest appear as like um, a fighting character in game uh, basically he there was technical difficulties and they weren't able to like do all that so I, I thought it was really cool that the cloak was incorporated into the game obviously and you know what I think his cloak is super cool and a lot of my favorite scenes are him with his cloak you know him on it on the motorbike and everything and that scene when he wraps the cloak and everything around his uh bike i i don't know that exact scene you know the scene i'm talking about with him on his bike the motorbike it kind of now gives me you know vibes off the dark night i don't know am i just talking nonsense just say you're talking shit jilly like what are you talking about but anyways that can scene kind of reminds me of that and i know a lot of people probably say oh my gosh the cgi oh my gosh the visuals and it does yes at the end it is kind of quite not the greatest but it's cheesily 
bad that it's freaking cool and it's freaking awesome. And personally, I like it. Personally, I'm not going to down the visuals. I'm not going to down the CGI. I mean, you know, if you're going to say that, let's look at let's look at the visuals and stuff and the CGI of Mortal Kombat. Mortal Kombat. Do 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 do. You know what I mean? So you know. It's kind of Mortal Kombat worthy in ways, you know what I mean? But I I think it's really cool, his cloak, and especially the scene where he goes down and he goes into the building and crashes in, and he's, like, going after Jason. So he uh, jumps down and everything, and the way his cloak, the red cloak and everything, his collar and everything comes up, and the way it's sort of, like, incorporated around, like, all the people stand around him and everything. Like, yes, you kind of go, okay, that could be improved a lot, obviously, but it was made in 1997. But you're going, I still think that that looks super cool, even today. And I still do think the movie stands up. And I, I don't know, even towards the end when it does get a bit kind of bad, like in a good way though, you sort of say to yourself, but I like that because it's an, it's a retro movie. It's retro, right? And to me, it actually looks super retro, almost like you're watching like or playing a re- an old retro game in a sense, you know. But there is times where I think the visuals are actually really, really good. And, you know, honestly, I have to say hats off. So basically... I think this movie is fantastic. I do. Uh, We have crazy characters in this, like a shape-shifting clown entity. You know, literally a shape-shifter. He's absolutely nuts. Like, there's a scene that I think is really hard. I literally cannot watch it. You know the scene with all the maggots or whatever, or worms or whatever on the pizza? I never watch that scene because it's disgusting. I'm like this. Can I look yet? It just reminds me of... Sorry, my lighting kind of went a bit weird there. Sorry, guys. But, you know, it kind of reminds me of the scene with the maggots in The Lost Boys. Again, I do all the classic guys. I only do the classics. I also did The Lost Boys. If you just want to check that out in my playlist, just go to my channel and you can see uh, Retro Friday's playlist uh, near the top. Basically, the synopsis of this movie, and you'll know this anyway before you've seen the movie, is basically Charlie Sheen's father, Martin Sheen, love Two and a Half Men, by the way. Let me know if you like Two and a Half Men. Love Charlie Sheen. He's absolutely hilarious. And, um... He, uh, his character is called Jason in this, you know, typical villain. He basically wants to control Earth with biological blackmail. And, you know, he recruits Al Simmons. And uh, he wants him to basically blow up a factory in North Korea. But obviously, you know, he's conning him. He's setting him up. And he quite literally burns him and sends him to hell and I he, like can't remember exactly the words he says it's something like see you in hell Al or something like that or see you in hell or whatever right and he literally does go to uh hell basically and basically the forces of darkness offer him and say to him you know we want you to become the leader of hell's army quite literally that is uh the story so that he can then go and see uh his wife and his um daughter and that it kind of reminds me that's what also kind of reminds me of the crow only the difference is that of course uh al simmons aka spawn was in hell for five years and obviously that's of course you know different in the sense of um the crow but you know again it it it, it does kind of remind me a lot of the crow but i love that i absolutely love that now some of my favorite scenes uh there's too many to name but to be honest they're mainly all the ones with his uh cloak like the one i was talking about earlier when he drops down from the building and he's going after jason and everything and the, all the kick-ass action scenes from there on in with his gun, with the chains, and again, that was great to see the ch- the gun and the chains all within the Mortal Kombat spawn character gameplay trailer for Mortal Kombat 11. I cannot wait. Heck, if freaking well, yes, I'll be getting that game. Heck, if freaking well, yes, I'll play it. And yeah, if you just want me to come on and do a review, let me know, and I will most likely... Um, I most likely say yes to you guys. You know what I mean. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna say no to my lovely subscribers at the end of the day. Um. Also, when the clown entity, you know, the way he can shape shift and stuff, and um, whenever it's just like standing behind him in the dark, and there's all like thunder and everything, uh, and like lightning, and I just I think that's such a really cool scene, and not just really cool, but really well shot. I thought, you know, with him and um Spawn, and also. There was a scene at the end with the clown entity when he came through. Um, this was actually in um, Wanda's house, you know, um, Al Simmons in Wanda's house with the daughter and everything. That You know, the very end scene comes through the wall. And you know what, guys? Is it just me? It cannot just be me. That super, super 
reminds me of the Frighteners. You know the scene from the Frighteners. You know the scene I'm talking about. Like, come on. And, you know, I think that that was so cool to see in both this and the Frighteners kind of see me, you know? So, like, this movie had that glimpse of the Frighteners and then, of course, the crew. So, you know... I absolutely love Peter Jackson's The Frighteners. Peter Jackson is a legend. Uh, I also did a Retro Fridays. Of course I did. Of course I did a Retro Fridays of The Frighteners. I've already done it. Because I know people that are maybe new, they're maybe like, yeah, you should do a Retro Friday of The Frighteners. But you know what? I've already done it. Because I, as like I said earlier, I literally, quite literally, only talk about the classics. So... I'm already on the ball with that one. Um, also, I do have some notes here, guys, because I literally didn't sleep last night. So I wanted to write down all my favourite parts because I'm like, mine just can't think right now. Uh, also, what was another one? Um, oh, yes. The first time I actually seen Spawn's cape, like, I, I thought was super cool. Because I can always remember it wasn't like a, it was always, it was like a side view, basically, when when you first seen him in his cape. It, it's like a side view of him running just running along it really dark you know very dark and gritty with his uh cape and i love how they got it to sort of like float and everything and yes you're looking at it and you're like yeah you can definitely tell like the cgi or whatever they used to get that all sort of like floating and whatever but i don't know guys i love it for what it was and i wouldn't change it for the world like if, if someone said like oh, we're going to take this movie, Spawn, and we're going to redo it, and we're going to redo the visuals, and have it looking all like this, and looking all like that. I go, no, but then you're going to take away from what it actually is. That's not going to be Spawn then for me. And also what I thought was clever, do you know how George Lucas uses like a, like the, like a screen thing that goes across and it fades across, right, for Star Wars? Well, the, I can remember, I don't know how many times that they used it, but I can remember that that was used for, because you've seen him, um, with his with his cloak and everything, and then straight after that, they done like a I can't remember where bites in the screen it came from, but basically used his cloak from the movie for the thing. I know it's super weird. It always makes me feel sick because like I have really bad vertigo, and I get super dizzy really easy sometimes when I'm watching movies or anything. And in the start of this and the end of this, I just can't really watch. I I just have to uh fast forward because the intro and the outro of you know like so-and-so in the movie so-and-so this so-and-so that you know the the names it's just it makes me really dizzy and i just can't guys i just can't and so yeah it's kind of it was quite badly done how they had all the names coming up at the start and all the names coming up at the end you're just like ah ah i can't be looking at that guys but yeah um Another one that I really loved was uh, the backflip that he done when he was just like going around all action here everywhere, just poof, chains, you know, messing shit up basically. And he done like a backflip. And uh, yeah, also I love the fact that when you've seen him in the movie, figuring out what he could actually do, you know, like, oh, this does this this does that and then when he was on the wall when the cops were after him he was like i can't remember what it was he said he was like oh f or oh shit or something but it was kind of like oh that's cool like he's trying to he's figuring out and everything what all he can do and that's what i really loved just cool seeing him in action but among it he's like oh i can do this i can do that i did not know that but yeah i thought it was super cool how they made his face look everything all burnt and everything and it was so cool because you could obviously tell, still tell it was him underneath like especially the eyes and the nose you could you could really tell i like the humor actually between um i was gonna say michael jai white what does it really matter it is michael jai white but between spawn and the clown i thought it's so cheesy like he says things like the clown the, the cheesy lines he the one-liners he comes off with it's just so mortal combat cheesiness he's like here's clowny as in like the shining here's johnny and it's just oh my gosh and then he sings something to him what was it he sings oh i haven't seen this movie from last summer but basically it was something like uh twink was it twinkle little star that's what it was twinkle twinkle little spawn well obviously he didn't sing it like that what am i doing but he's like twinkle twinkle little spawn to him instead of twinkle twinkle little star you're like oh my gosh you're an agent you're an absolute agent and then when the cops were looking for him and everything uh he was standing on like a side ledge with his cloak on moving just as cool as you like just 
he is so cool his character honestly and another favorite scene of mine would be when they're uh he's at the a graveyard with the clown and is sitting all sort of incorporates around him and everything like that is absolutely cool it's just a fantastic movie i actually would enjoy this movie more than mortal kombat some people might disagree with that and feel free to disagree like i love both and I love their, I love, you know what I love about both of the movies, both Mortal Kombat and Spawn? The fact that they are so darn right cheesy, but you just love them anyway. That's what I absolutely love about both of these movies. And I just, and at the end and everything, so heartbreaking. The daughter, he gave the daughter the necklace and everything is necklace. And I don't know, it's, it, 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 you do feel so sad for him at the end. You do feel shitty for him. Am I the only one? I can't be. But you do feel really, really bad for him because at the end and everything. And like his wife was going out with someone else and everything and all. That was heartbreaking for him, you know, having to having to actually see that. And that was a really well done scene at the be- toward the beginning when uh, he was in the garden and everything. And he just seen his face and everything all burnt. And he was, you know, like this and everything. He's got Wanda, Wanda. And then throughout the movie, when he was going over and trying to speak to his daughter, obviously without the, his uh, wife seeing, without Wanda seeing, and he was talking to his daughter and stuff. And the daughter actually said, who are you? And that part always just breaks my heart because it's like, imagine your daughter asking who you are. Like that must have been soul destroying. And you, you literally do watch the movie and you put yourself in his shoes i do anyways so much empathy for his character um but yet he's kick-ass and badass at the same time so yeah i mean i absolutely love this movie uh i think it was very well written very creative very dark very gritty just fantastic it's a very enjoyable film i i absolutely love this film and yeah, I, I probably will come on at some stage and do Mortal Kombat. I don't know when, guys, so I'm not promising anything. <laughs> but I will at some point come on and do Mortal Kombat. But aside from that, please let me know what you think of uh, this movie. I think it's rather underrated in a sense because there's a lot of people that I would mention this to just, you know, in a convo. And they're like, no, I didn't even know that movie existed. And you're like, how did you not know this movie existed? I mean, like, fair enough, you know what I mean? But... I've actually seen people in comment sections of, uh, you know, different people reacting to the Mortal Kombat 11 saying, I don't know why there's never been a movie made of Spawn. This character's so cool. And you're just sitting there like, what? So you haven't seen the 1997 movie? Oh my gosh. Wow. Wow. But anyways, guys, I'm going to go because I don't even know how I've sat here. Like, I'm just half asleep. But I'm going to be going and editing this um, and then I will get it up and get it set up as a premiere. And yes, probably uh, rest for an hour or so and then I will be able to see all your lovely, uh, well, come on, sorry, in the premiere and uh, write to you. So thank you so much for watching, guys. I will be super happy to see you down in the comments and see what you all think of this movie. And if you haven't seen this movie, what are you doing with yourself? Go and watch it. So I love doing these. I appreciate all the support that I get for them. Thank you so, so much. And keep an eye out tomorrow because tomorrow I will be uploading and doing a review of Star Wars The Clone Wars Episode 4. I was hoping to get the chance to watch it this morning, but I did not get the chance to watch it. Had to go out today as well. So what, what I will do is I will watch it first thing in the morning and then I will get it recorded just when I get the chance and then I will get it up. So do uh, remember to come back to my channel tomorrow if you would be interested in seeing my thoughts, my spoiler, it will be spoiler, it'll just be spoiler for all these individual episodes of Star Wars The Clone Wars Episode 4. But other than that, I've overstayed my stay on my channel as I always do because I always like to talk too much. I will see you soon, guys, and take care. Bye.